everybody, Robert here with BRPAutodesigns.com. Today, we're gonna work on a whole new project. We're gonna show you how to go from this to this on your Jeep Wrangler JL or Gladiator. Okay, in order for us to upgrade the uh, speakers on our soundbar, we're gonna need to uh, use this kit. This is a Metro kit that we sell, and what it is is uh, it will allow you to upgrade your speaker from the small little speakers that it comes with to an actual 6.5 uh, coaxial speaker or component speaker. Uh, we're gonna put this aside, and then we're gonna also show you how to actually install the speaker itself. In this case, we're gonna be using these Rockford Fosgate coaxial speakers. We're gonna do a step-by-step walk you through it and show you how easy it is to install. So we're gonna open this up and show you what's included in the kit. Right off the bat, you're gonna see your owner's manual. It's gonna show step-by-step uh, step on how to install it. Go through here, and we're gonna do that when we're installing ours. Then it's gonna come with the quick connectors. This is supposed to be for, for you to be able to uh, plug and play. We're gonna put those aside. It should come with a pair. And of course, it's gonna come with your uh, six and a half adapters. Now you can see, this is what they actually look like and this is what we're gonna go for uh, when we add the six and a half inch speakers. Put this aside. This does come with a uh, polyfill, a little bit of polyfill. Um, not sure why, because you don't really need it for, for uh, mid-range speakers. You usually need it for um, like a subwoofer but I'm guessing it's just gonna help out with, uh, with any vibration is the only thing I could think of. And then of course, all of your screws. And this kit is what we're gonna be using here, this piece here. We're gonna be using it, uh, there's two of them, one for each side, and you can see one has a uh, nice a soft, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, it's just kind of uh, a foamy thing. So that's actually gonna go uh, towards the, the uh, the sound bar itself and then this is going to be facing you okay so let's start on this we're going to go ahead and start and then go from there in the owner's manual it's going to tell you that you're going to need a 316 allen bit which we've got we'll put this here you're also going to need a phillips bit which we've got here with our drill and i do recommend with a drill and then um, it also is gonna tell you you need some kind of cutting tool, reciprocating saw or other cutting device. Uh, one, we do recommend a, a blade on the side and this is a, the tool that we're gonna be using to cut the, uh, the trim piece out. Now, one other thing that, I, that is not listed is a marker. I do recommend a Sharpie silver preferably. It's the best way, it'll, it'll, it's a contrast against that black. And then you are gonna need a T27 bit and a T20 bit. Now I do apologize, they're two different sizes, but that's all I could find. <laughs> anyway, you make do with what you have. From here, we're gonna take, take it to the next step and then we'll go from there. Okay, so we've got an, our Allen wrench. We're just gonna stick it on here and this is what it's gonna be used for. You're just gonna be removing the factory bolts that come with it, or screws. There's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four. That should allow you to access the actual speakers. You're gonna remove that there. And here is where you're gonna need the bit. We take this, we're gonna remove the factory. It looks like a three and a half inch speaker. Okay, we're gonna pop those out. And we're gonna go ahead and squeeze this in like that. And that's the high quality Alpine system this supposedly comes with. <laughs> they, should, they should be laughing at themselves for selling us this, this cheap quality crap. Okay, so now we're gonna go here. We're gonna remove this one. This is their little base driver. I'm gonna remove that, put that aside. So one other thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna remove this little piece, which is a port. Now we're using a T27 bit for that. Now that we've done that, this should pop out, like so. Put that aside. Now we can continue to the next step. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece here, and like I said, the foamy piece goes facing down. We're going to put it right on top. Now this is where your kindergarten side comes in, where you get to draw, pull out your marker, and do a little drawing. So this is actually what you're going to do. You're going to draw this, and you're going to you're going to go through, and you're going to trace it out, because that's what you're going to be cutting. You can see here. This is actually what we're going to be cutting. Now this kit does have another hole here. You don't need to draw that out. That's just if you're going to uh, install a component speaker, something that has a separate tweeter somewhere else. Our setup that we're going to be installing here will have the tweeter included in the middle. Those are called coaxial speakers. That's what we're going to be installing here. But right now what we need to do is we need to cut this out. So again, you need to trace it, make it so where you can see it. And when you remove this, you'll see that this is actually the pieces you're going to be cutting out. We are going to go around this piece here. Um, like I said, we're going to be doing that. So first off, what we want to do is make sure that we don't mess with this plug. So we're going to squeeze this out like this. Okay. And the other plug will be here. We just want to try to tuck it inside. And the reason for that is we're going to be cutting, I push that in there, we're going to be cutting these areas. We don't want to cut that wire at all. So now I'm going to take my, uh, my reciprocating saw, which is here, and we're going to start cutting that out. Bit broke. Time to get another one. Okay, so our bit broke, so make sure you have a set of bits lying around because uh, just in case they break, and of course we're going to continue. There we go, we broke another one. So we're just, uh, we're almost done, I'm just going to take it and replace it again and continue. Okay, so once we've done that, we can start pulling this out. And I know it doesn't look pretty, just take your time and you should be fine. It's just a lot of these little hairs and that's kind of why I told you just get an, another place so you can kind of get those out. We're going to clean this up and then once we put it on, we start putting it on and you won't even see any of this. You see we ended up having to get a vacuum out. I normally like to install this when it's up installed in the, uh, in the Jeep itself. Um, it's actually a little bit harder me doing it out, but we wanted to remove it so we could actually show you how to do it and record it, you know, a little bit better. Um, but normally I would recommend leaving this installed and just going out and doing it that way. Uh, doing this upside down, believe it or not, cutting it around this, this trim piece is a lot easier um, and a lot easier to clean up. Now, as you can see, the issue that we were having was, and the reason why I broke a couple of bits was because it was, a I think, a little bit too long and I was hitting this piece here. So, uh, adjusting the bit as far in as you can is probably the best bit. Um, and then, like I said, just go ahead and clean out the best that you can with a, uh, a blade like this and you should be good. The next step, we're just going to put these aside now. We're not going to need them anymore. Because we're going to get your actual uh, trim piece or, or uh, metal metal piece that we're going to be installing. We're going to put this in like so. As you can see, um, it fits real good. Now, if you would, if you had a component speaker, uh, you would have uh, trimmed this out, and you wouldn't see that. But in this case, we're not going to do that. You're going to get uh, when you uh, get into your box. You're going to see that in the box that the kit came in. You're going to have several screws uh, with it. The ones that you want are these smaller ones like this. We're going to pull out, uh, I believe we're going to need, need about nine of them. And then we're going to get our screw, our drill, sorry. And you, this is where you're going to get your Phillips bit that you're going to need. And what we're going to do is we're going to need to make sure, see how this is, this fits right around it? You feel it when you, when you put it on, it kind of locks in. So we know that that's where it needs to be. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take these and we're going to install these screws in. Now these are the smaller screws. These are the ones that you want to be using for this. Now 
these, um, some of these have actual screws, uh, actually part of it. So you need a, the, uh, for those, we're gonna pull these ones out and I'm gonna show you what these look like. These are the ones that I'm, you can see, that's how those go. And those are gonna, gonna be the ones that are gonna hold the top piece on. Oh. This is actually what they look like there. I'm just making sure that I didn't put a screw through one of these when I didn't need to. Okay, I believe that's it. This one uh, needs to be left alone. So does this one, so does this one. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put this final piece on. But just a quick note, and this is where I created a boo-boo. You're not supposed to cut out this piece here. It was one of these like so. So I did screw up on that. So make sure you guys understand to when you cut the trim, just cut it around like this and have it go straight this way. I See, we, we make mistakes ourselves too. So make sure that when you're trimming this, you go straight across. Otherwise you won't have anywhere for this one to grab on and that's actually there. Uh, I'm not worried about it because this is our demo uh, that we're gonna be using anyways. But uh, if, you, uh, if you're gonna be installing this in your Jeep, you sure don't wanna cut that bottom piece out, okay? So keep that in mind. When you're trimming it, trim it like this all the way around and go straight. Do not cut that out. I repeat, do not cut that out. From there, we're gonna take this here. And I like using the factory screws. You're gonna need four of those, the ones that we removed off of the other one. Those look like this over here, as you can see. We'll pan over here, like so. We're gonna keep those. We're gonna use this here, like so. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Now we're gonna take a T20 and we're gonna take these two here, or actually those for some reason are stuck together. We're gonna take the screws that were provided and those are the ones that go here. Once that's done, this is all pretty, pretty sturdy. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you what speaker we're gonna be putting on here and then we'll go from there. Alrighty, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually put this aside and I'm gonna show you uh, the uh, speakers that we're gonna be putting on here. Now, the speakers that we're gonna be doing is these, we're gonna be installing these coaxial uh, Rockford Fosgate speakers. It's a really good speaker. It's the Punch series, so you know you're getting a good quality speaker. Um, I'm gonna pull this, we don't need this. That's just the owner's manual. We're gonna take the cover off. So you can see the difference in the quality. This is what we're gonna be installing in, in the soundbar. Comes with a nice little grill and a really, really nice look. Look at that. Just a beautiful speaker. But if you know Rockford Fosgate, they do everything in quality. So that's what we're gonna be putting in. You pull this out. They all come with uh, their own screws. So we got some screws here. I'm gonna put this aside. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring that sound bar back. We're gonna put that here. Now, uh, we will be placing this like so, of course. And what's really nice is this actually has these uh, holes there so you can align it. it, makes it so easy. So you're not, you know, you're, when you're putting a speaker and you're not sure if it's off or anything, it, it actually aligns it. So that makes it really, really nice. Uh, before we go ahead and do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually remove the speaker and we're gonna install the uh, plug and play kit that, that uh, the Metra kit comes with. As you can see, it comes, for one, it comes with one uh, quick connect uh, wire per side. So it's got two of those. Um, like I said, I never install that filler piece that goes in there. It, it, to me, on a, uh, a mid-range uh, speaker, you don't need that. It's not like a subwoofer. That's when I use a polyfill and that sort of thing. So I'm not even gonna mess with that. Alrighty, so what you wanna do now is you wanna remove, remember the wires that we had? Uh, we tucked them all in, we wanna remove those out. Now, you're gonna have two strands. You're gonna see one that's a little bit thicker and one that's a little bit thinner. You see the difference? This one's for your tweeter and this one's for your mid-range. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the uh, wiring kit that they came with and we're gonna pull one of these out and this is supposed to be the, the, uh, the quick connect. You can see it's a little bit bigger, so you know it's definitely not this one. So what we want to do is we want to connect it here. Like so. 
Now, this has these quick connects that are supposed to be universal for speakers, but one thing that you notice is if we look back here to the speaker that we're installing, these are a little bit bigger. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna have to cut these and put a couple of bigger ones. Now, this is something that you run into anytime you're modifying or doing some kind of aftermarket setup with your vehicle, you may have uh, to make some modifications. This is one of those. You may have to, you know, add another another uh, piece that wasn't included or that sort of thing. So be prepared anytime you're doing any type of aftermarket upgrades. Now we take this and there you go. See how easy that is? Now one thing to keep in mind, and this is one of the most important things. When you connect this, for example, once you have it connected, if it's connected, and you notice that you're getting not that great of a sound. Uh, we noticed this in a couple of our installs. We noticed that depending on whether uh, you have the Alpine system or not, sometimes when you connect it with directly to this one here, oops, look at that one, that one came off. I have to redo that one. What we found was that sometimes it will not play, your speaker will not play. And if you're trying to figure out why it won't play is um, some of them are connected wrong. So you may need to cut this and splice into this side over here. So if you're not getting any sound out of this quick connect, you will need to cut your wires and then splice into the other one. That being said, once you get that, what I like to do is, this is if anything, what we were talking about earlier, you get two pieces, one for each side. What you wanna do is not necessarily use this piece, um, for uh, not necessarily use it for uh, for any sound upgrades because it's really not going to make a difference in the sound it's more for the wires now that's what I would use it for um, I do recommend you get some Tessa and the reason for that is that way you're not getting uh, or Tessa tape use some Tessa tape and that way you're not getting vibrations from this rattling inside of your enclosure. Alrighty, so we've connected the speaker. Now we just need to determine which way we want this to go. Now this is facing forward. As you can see, this is where this is connected. So what actually I'm gonna do is turn it around, line up the holes as you can see. This makes it so easy. You're gonna take four of the screws. It comes with eight screws, but we're actually gonna use four because uh, it's four per side. Then we're gonna take this and line it up like so. Make sure we're lined up. There you go. And now we can take our screws, kind of put them in, get them started more or less. The good thing is Rockford Fosgate does provide you with a bit. You can see we've already put it on. We're gonna start tightening these up. Alrighty, so we've gone ahead and finished the install and you can see this is what it actually looks like. Actually, I have this upside down, so let me turn this around, like so. This is actually what uh, how it should be. Now, this is the factory and this is the uh, upgraded six and a half uh, coaxial speaker, speaker by Rockford Fosgate. You can tell there's a huge difference and when you install it after you connect everything, you're gonna notice a huge difference in quality and sound. Now, um, this will play off of your factory uh, head unit. You'll have plenty of power, but if you really, really wanna take it a, to the next step, uh, uh, add an amplifier. An amplifier will bring out the quality even 10 times better. It's just way crisper and cleaner. Uh, that being said, that concludes our video. I do recommend uh, you guys uh, installing this, or I'm sorry, I do recommend you guys leaving it in uh, your Jeep while you're installing it. It makes it much easier for you to do the cutting. Um, it, we went through three bits on this one trying to cut it here because it kept shifting on me. So uh, that being said, do it on your Jeep. Uh, this was only for install uh, video purposes. Um, but anyway, that's that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys like our videos, you, you guys know what to do. Subscribe, hit the like button and share. Um, anything you do to help us out, we greatly appreciate it. Now, that keeps us motivated in making more videos. Uh, just letting you guys, uh, uh, or having you guys share our product or our videos. Anyways, uh, I leave you guys with that. Uh, God bless you all. Until the next video, we'll see you guys. Bye-bye.